Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shameless Explorations, um, Conversations with Coaches. Today, I'm here with Lady, um, my friend from the Erotic Blueprint um, coaching community, um, an amazing coach from so many different modalities. So um, I'm going to have you introduce yourself in a little bit. But first, I'm wondering if you want to start us all off with some pleasure first. Yes, yes, yes. Hola, hola. Um, before, I'm just going to burn a little bit of the sage. So you guys can start, you ladies and gentlemen and binary folks as well, can start by taking a breath and any kind of movement that feels good, maybe closing the eyes. And I am just going to set the energetic tone of our time together. And as I say to you, Holly and me, I wanna open the channels for everything juicy that wants to come through us. And I don't wanna allow any space for what doesn't belong to us and what doesn't help us serve from my highest self and what doesn't help us serve for the highest good of all. My intention is to be present and playful and sexy during this time together with you. Let's all take a big breath in through the nose and a big exhale, maybe a ha or a or a I've been practicing animal sounds for flash. I think I got the rooster down pretty good. Uh, so with that, maybe we bring our arms over our head and we take a big juicy stretch mm, and any face, any little movement that feels like yours. I love to rub my head because it feels sensual and delicious. So maybe pick a body part that needs your attention. And I am a big fan of individual flavor. So maybe it's about stillness with your hands and your heart. Or maybe it's about massaging your shoulders or your head like me. So just take a moment in that unique, selfish, delicious moment. And then I just take a moment in silence to honor presence. And with your eyes closed in that presencing, if you feel like you're willing to squeeze and release, these are the sirens of New York City, squeezing and releasing maybe your genitals, your juicy, delicious parts. So inhale to squeeze, exhale to release. Inhale to squeeze, exhale to release. And then decide what rhythm feels good. And to me, this feels like Kegel. So I'm gonna pump, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. And I start to feel that juicy, playful, horny energy <laughs> in my <Yeah>. sacred space. <laughs> <clears throat> which is always a good ingredient to share and have a good time. So just notice, I'm feeling a little bit of that erotic energy, but ask yourselves, how does it feel for me? Where is my erotic energy in this moment? And it's possible that the squeezes and releases may not do it for you. So I would invite you to get curious what would help me find or connect to or be witness to my erotic energy in this moment? And I'm gonna just take three more squeezes because I'm a shapeshifter, so I always want more. <laughs> and with that, um, I honor everyone here, all the energies, all the frequencies that are present with love and compassion, and I am excited to begin. Amen.
<laughs> Thanks, lady. That was juicy. <laughs> My cheeks are rosy. I know. <laughs> I have pussy tingles, and those are always really nice. I love to kind of turn those on. Um, yeah. For work, of course, to, to be a good coach. <laughs> Isn't it the pussy tingles is the best way to start anything? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. You see, Holly, this is why our conversations <laughs> are always enjoyable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Great. Um, give me a second. I'm just going to open up my Facebook here and see just in case people ask questions. Yeah. Um, can you hear those oh. sirens? This is mega New York City. Like, Yeah. They didn't find <laughs> them yet, huh? <laughs> no. It's like the New York City soundtrack, no matter what's going on. <laughs> okay. So while I get this set up, why don't you um, tell us about yourself? I know there's so much fun about you because there's something that we have in common. So Lady and I both um, Love explore pussy it <laughs> so much. <laughs> Pussy tingles all day long. (laughs) And we both come from like a wide variety of backgrounds, like circus, uh, different types of coaching, um, fitness, um, nutrition, like all these different ways of finding the pleasure of your living and like our own exploration of our living. So can you tell a lot about your background? Because I think it's so fun when it's more like when it's more broad. We're kind of told to like keep it keep it simple and just talk about the one thing, but our life is not one thing. So, can you share about how broad your journey has been? <laughs> one, thank you, Holly, for that and giving me permission to go broad because I grew up always feeling that I was too much mm-hmm. and that I wanted to do many things. And um, so, yeah. So, let's say I first started as a dancer. You know modern ballet, jazz, African hip hop. Like I just explore that range and I fell in love with movement. And it's interesting that now I realize I love the movement of everything. At the beginning, it was the movement of the body, but I like the movement of energy. I like the movement of growth. I like the movement of curiosity and pleasure waving. So there's something definitely about movement that I connect to. And I'm very grateful for my dance background because it really helped me really be embodied. And, you, and you're all going to see that I feel things very physically. <laughs> um, so I started like that. And then I evolved to capoeira, which is Brazilian martial arts. And that was a little bit of, of, a, of a way to make dance some more creative and make some more um, make it more dynamic. I also have a very strong masculine in me and that I love very dearly. So Capoeira gave me an opportunity to to be very strong and fast and um, and aggressive. (laughs) So I explore that and eventually I left to work for a place called Club Med. And there um, after teaching for many years, you know, fitness and dance and that combination, I started to learn circus, aerial. So web, lyra, um, silks, because there was a circus school in Club Med. So even though I got there as a fitness instructor, they were like, do you want to learn circus? And I was like, I've never done, it just seemed, it seemed impossible because we are taught that you don't learn things later and that circus people are circus, the gymnastics are gymnasts, the basketball players are basketball players. So Club Med really was the first place that welcomed my desire for variety my desire for too muchness and they really encourage you to if you wanted to be a sailing instructor if you wanted to be a bartender the receptionist could become the sports manager they really had a way of moving us around even when we didn't want to so i'm gonna say that because when it was happening it's like you want me to be in charge of the sailing team i barely know how to swim but they were like here and that really taught me how to jump into situations when I'm not prepared for, how to manage experts, you know? So I was managing the sailing team, but all the sailing team knew more about sailing than me. Um, and, and, and that was a beautiful training in, in that a leader, a manager doesn't necessarily have to be an expert because sometimes the experts may not have the structure or the organization or some of those parts. So uh, in Club Med, I went from fitness to circus, um, teaching 
Ariel to sports manager to entertainment manager to sailing manager. <laughs> and eventually I was preparing to become general manager, but my heart and my soul wanted something more. So I decided to leave and became a flight attendant. <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to travel. <laughs> and I did that for a little bit, but then realized that I was actually, this is my biased opinion. I felt like a, a cocktail waitress in the air who was under tipped. So I was like, hmm, okay, let me go bartend instead. <laughs> so then I bartended for some time. And then in that, I've always had a desire for fashion. So I was like, hmm. I think I want to be a fashion stylist. And I decided to enroll in FIT, a Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, and start a fashion styling certificate. Um, and I was really lucky to get gigs right away. Like I did a shoot for Inc. Magazine, um, for Nina Sky, which was a group from, I don't know if you remember, Move Your Body Girl. Anyways, those girls. <laughs> and then I realized that styling... Um, was just carrying a whole bunch of clothes around, buying stuff, returning it, that the people that you were styling may not like your fashion sense. And I was like, I like fashion, but I actually don't want to ask anyone their opinion. So this is not for me. So in, in trying so many things, I learned that the process, the reality of a career is very different from, I want to be a photographer. I want to be a stylist. So I decided that I didn't want to be a stylist because I just wanted to think about what colors I wanted. <laughs> and um, you're giving me permission, so I'm going for it. Then I decided yeah. to become an eyewear designer. <laughs> you know, there's, there's actually so much learning in just this, this how it evolves, right? Because we start somewhere and then we go, and then it evolves into something else. And then somehow we're living in this totally different life that we had planned. Unless you choose that thing where it's like, I have to have this career. Yeah. And then so, but like, you're so vivacious and alive and happy. <laughs> so like, what's possible when you actually follow all those desires instead of holding yourself back? So I love. Yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm going to, I'm going to point a little shadow. I'm like, this is taking too long. This is too many things. Don't tell them everything. Cause it's that too muchness that society has, you know, Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong. I, I, I was not always in this much joy. I did feel judged. I did sometimes feel there's maybe there's something wrong with me. Why can't I commit? Um, why can't I have one thing? So, well, I started this uh, eyewear company. So I would literally buy glasses and then I would like pimp them out. I would sand them, paint them, like splatter paint. And then I would sell them. And um it was amazing for a while and I, and I would wear them and people would be so impressed by them. This was before they all started to be really like fancy. And it's so interesting that now I see at Gucci, some of the designs that I did so many years ago and I'm like, oh wow, that's so interesting because I started before that trend. Um, and and I, I, I did it and even got a humongous order. Like I, I remember this woman saw me in a resort and she's like, I want to buy these glasses for a charity because they had a little bit of a charitable point. You could buy the glasses from me for 50 bucks. Or if you did an act of kindness and recorded it, like feed the homeless or volunteer somewhere, I would send them to you because I wanted the glasses to also be a symbol of contribution that through fashion, we're also teaching people to be kind but you know what was so funny? No one ever did any act of kindness for the glasses. They preferred to buy them. <laughs> I'm being kind. I want to look good. I forget that. Can I just pay you the 50 bucks? <laughs> um, and it was so interesting because it gave me an opportunity to be in my artist. Like I, as a dancer, you're an artist, but sometimes dancers were the unrecognized artists. You know, it's not painting or music. So Definitely designing glasses. I, I just felt I found myself in the hardware store trying to buy some paint. And I was like, I'm an artist. My hands are dirty with paint. <laughs> and I felt very happy in that moment. So interesting. Um, so anyways, that faded. I, I actually lost interest a little bit. And now I know that my path was bigger later on. 
And then I went back to kind of fitness and personal training and brought all that back and, and really got interested in the one-on-one -on -one time with people because I had been doing group and, I, and the psychology of transformation, you know, I had lost 40 pounds. I had overcome, you know, eating disorders, depression and all of that. And I brought that to my one-on-one -on -one personal training and I realized some people don't actually want to work out. They, they're looking for a little bit of connection, someone that listens to them, that sees them. And I fell in love with that, um, that dynamic of coaching. Um, and then it slowly started to evolve um, into being curious about sex and relationships because people would tell me a lot about their relationships and what was happening. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting how new relationship energy and how things are up and down. And I was like, I'm going to start interviewing couples mm -hmm. just to see whoever would talk to me. I was like, it doesn't matter. And my only boundary was you need to tell me the truth. If you're going to lie or try to pimp up your relationship, even if it's not working, that doesn't serve me because I was doing research. So I started doing like these little motivational videos and it was like a one minute motivation Monday. I was just still playing, <laughs> trying to find my, my niche. And eventually I bumped into Esther Perel and she interviewed Jaya. And I was initially looking for like a couples counseling course. And Esther Perel was my, you know, my, my woman. And then Jaya comes, who's the creator of the erotic blueprints. And, and she talks about having a sex coaching certification. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> because sex is always so interesting. And we'll talk about it. I've been in, you know, open relationships. I've been a cheater. I'm a not, I, there was always, I was like, what, how can we hack this? Um, and I eventually went to the Jaya website, whatever, and just signed up and, and my life changed, my sex life changed, my business changed, like <laughs> everything just exploded. And I was like, oh, wow, I had been looking for all these things and maybe judging a part of me, but now they are my tools for my sex coaching and transformation. Now they're, they're my street credit. Like. I've been there. I know what it's like. You know, I failed. I tried businesses. I tried relationships. So now it feels like a little bit like graduation. Like I made it. <laughs> My parents are okay. Cause they were concerned for a while. So yeah, that's a little bit of how I kind of got here. Um, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it so fun with like searching, searching when you find the pleasure, it's like, Oh, Oh, like, nothing else. <laughs> it's like, okay, this has everything. And I'll have this pleasure in everything that I do. Every yes. I want it in every color. I'll take every yeah. color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh God, what a journey talking about. Yeah. Everything. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, I want to hear more about um, being poly and cheating and, um uh, like because we all have these things like we so everybody's either cheated or been cheated on I think like mm -hmm. or, or at least known of that dynamic it's everywhere yeah yeah um so for me like I used to be a cheater until so somebody good. cheated on me <laughs> I was like what the fuck <laughs> this fucking sucks <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah um, yeah so I, you know, I've been in and out of relationships for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, it's been a big chunk of my life. I started dating my first boyfriend at 13 and we were together for seven years. So my first relationship was seven years. Um, and my first erotic experience as well, you know, at 14 years old, which was, um, and of course, I did anal before regular sex, thinking that somehow that was better. I don't know. It's not a myth. It happens. Um, so I was pretty happy. So monogamy was the traditional thing. I was not, there was no other option when I was 13. I, I didn't have that concept of other styles of relationship. So I, I was monogamous up to probably like the fifth year. Let me not lie. At three years, I started to get bored. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand. I kind of thought this is just the way relationships are. This is, you know, my parents look a little bored. 
the other relationship look a little bored. So I kind of just accepted that. And then by year five, I, I started to be a little bit flirting with boundaries, you know, letting some guys kiss me, like just not full on because I was young, but definitely not honoring and respecting my lover at the time. And I, I feel for him because I, I was just clueless. I was just thinking of myself. So, um, so I eventually cheated on him. <laughs> so that was my first cheating. And then my second relationship became my husband. Um, and I ended up cheating there too. So I always start monogamy, very happy. And then I just get bored. And then I just feel started to feel, and this is my past self. Now I understand a little more self-responsibility and accountability that boredom is not just something that's happening to you. You're choosing boredom. So I was a little irresponsible by saying, I'm bored. Let me go entertain myself with something else as opposed to either breaking up or, so I just didn't think of the breaking up part. So I was, well, isn't that also like a part of, um, it could be a, uh, shapeshifter shadow because we get bored right and then it's like what's gonna entertain me not this one <laughs> yeah <Let's sign> <laughs> what do I want well, I'm too much. you're not enough you're not enough. <laughs> yeah i had a little ego issue of i love just too much variety and i'm super interesting and creative and you're not enough or you can't keep up or but ironically holly i'm attracted to the calmer guys to the guys that want a little less or quieter so i have this contradiction sometimes going on so I cheated on number one and I say husband number one and then I went on um my first husband passed away so I went on a fuck the world let's cheat and have sex so I, then I just used sex as well if the love of my life died let me use this erotic energy to kind of like whip it around and I met this guy in Brazil and I went head over heels for him and, and ended up moving to Argentina because of him. And this guy, for example, I met him in Club Med. So I was in Club Med in Brazil working there. I meet him. He's on vacation for three weeks. We spend the whole time together, honeymoon. He leaves and I'm like, I'm moving to, to Argentina to be with him. Man, this guy, we hung up me for a week and then he ghosted me. Mm -hmm. Like now I'm in Argentina. <laughs> recent widow <laughs> alone <laughs> depressed <laughs> and that was my first experience of someone doing me wrong mm -hmm. and that hurt so much and I just couldn't understand I was like how can you be mean to a widow <laughs> don't I get a special card <laughs> isn't this widow thing like don't I get a discount of special parking or something <laughs> I was really wow that really because it was the first guy that cut it right that I didn't have the power to leave or cheat or so he took all that power away from me mm -hmm. and and that was the first time that I thought oh wow it must not feel good to the people that I've done this to and it was so like oh it was so heavy so that was my first kind of awareness of not only is this not right but this doesn't feel good on me and um Eventually, I married a second time. There's been a few marriages, too. <laughs> and, um, and again, we start three years. I feel like three years is, is usually the time. And then I started to feel I want more. But this time, this is what I decided to do. I, I remember I was in Japan, and I wanted, you know, I had cheated. So I had already cheated. And this is what I did. I said, hey, I just cheated on you. I'm coming back to New York. Do you still want to be together? We can break up because I think I'm just a cheater. <laughs> so I don't want to keep getting punished for my nature. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. This is like. <laughs> this is not the topic. This is not the topic. <laughs> Anyways, I went back and now I know that we both had we were in comfort zones. So we had an inability to leave each other because we did love each other. We just no longer had that passion, curiosity, innovation that keeps a relationship growing. So because we couldn't leave each other, we agreed to an open relationship, uh, meaning we can, you know, when we're traveling, whatever, you can do whatever you want. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. And I did two years of that. And I thought I have it all. 
I could cheat. I have the relationship. Like there's no punishment. And what I didn't realize is that our relationship actually ended when we started the open relationship. Mm. It was no longer the same. It just crumbled. You, the, the, the sweetness, the, the shine, it, like it, it, it was still standing, but I think that decision created mold, mold so small, so little that we couldn't feel it. And it just, mm. the relationship was rotten from inside um, because of that. So I, I know a lot of people can go into these relationships by choice and it works for them. But for me, it was, it was a cop out and it truly destroyed even what we had. Um, cause it, I, I wanted it. He didn't, um, you know? So, and then I just felt like, but I'm still unhappy. So if I can cheat and still be unhappy then, and I decided I'm going to go to Australia and just have lovers. Like I'm done with this relationship thing. I'm like, you know, I'm starting to get my divorce. I'm like, I'm leaving. And then I meet the seven foot soulmate of mine out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's so amazing. And, you know, I was still married, but on my way to divorce. And I said, hey, do you want to be in an open relationship? <laughs> you can sleep with whoever you want. And, and he said, no, mm. that's not freedom. You're a slave to your need for variety. And I was like, what? <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> And that's not true for everyone, but it was for me. I was escaping. I was hiding in my, in my need for freedom. There was a lot of things I wasn't dealing with. There was a lot of opportunities to be honest that I just decided to run or lie. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, all right, this motherfucker doesn't know. We're going to get bored and then he's going to want it. So I was like, okay, I'll play because you're too cute. And I really want to be with you. So I'll play with your monogamy, monogamy game. But I know I'm going to prove you wrong. And three and a half years later, we're married. I haven't been with anybody since. I have explored depths of love and pleasure and relationship that with everyone I've been with combined has not compared to what I have with this one person. So he busted all my myths around variety and, and monogamy. And I, I still can't believe it because I thought I was a serial cheater and a mega shapeshifter. And here we go, married three times. Three times you're out. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for sharing all that. Like, because um, monogamy, polyamory, the cheating, like, it, it's all really individual. And it, like, for me, I've wondered, you know, should, can I be polyamorous? Um, but I'm a serial monogamist. I know that. And then I have gotten bored in the past, and then I need to cheat. What is that? Like, what is that? <laughs> what is that what am I looking for then because I because then I'm like I should I maybe I want to explore polyamory and then as soon as I ask myself that I'm like nope <laughs> oh that's not for me that wouldn't work that would be a lot of a lot of pulling me in a lot of directions that I don't have a lot of space for so then it's yeah. like okay then then I ask the questions like what is it that I'm really seeking yeah What's and, and in me yeah and what is it that is really underneath I'm bored or need more variety? Because mm -hmm. now what I did was go deeper, trust more, surrender more, and then I can get more variety and more pleasure. But if you leave your sex life at the surface the whole time, yeah. then it does is the illusion of lack of variety. It's almost like you think you don't have enough tools, but you do. You're just choosing not to use them. Maybe because of willingness, interest. There's so many things that, that go in. But um, polyamory is intense. I think I never knew about polyamory when all that was happening. I think because yeah. having relationships with multiple people, like I'm like, oh, wow, that's a lot of time. I feel with this one relationship, and I know this is my personal experience, and there's polyamorous people that are super happy. I don't have it, and I'm sensitive, and and. And I need, yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm more of a monogamous than I allowed myself to be because I mm -hmm. had judgment around that's boring, that's vanilla, and look at me now. Yeah, it's more um, so, like 
one of the points of view it's it's more awake you're more awakened if you can do a polyamorous relationship you know you're modern yeah. and <laughs> yeah yeah you're like higher level relationship person but that's not real it's like it's individual it's individualized <laughs> yeah and i was not able to get the type of variety with the bunch mm -hmm. so i did try countless and i i really think variety is a very deep experience and you mm -hmm. have to there's there's the inner work let's call it inner play because there's so much inner work around there's the inner play and you have to really get to know yourself and and, and your voice and talk about who you are and what you need Mm -hmm. So I was bored because I didn't ask for more time. I was bored because they didn't give me three hour body mapping sessions. I was bored because sex was very weird and only penetrative. So I was bored because I hadn't really explored as right. deep as you can explore, as opposed to being bored because of a person, you know? Yeah. So it was the, my making it external instead of like, what is it that I need? What, what, what am I missing? What, what, what can I ask for? Yeah. How yeah. can I shift it? Oh, goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Great. So let's talk about, um, well, let's get on point finally. Okay, let's get on oral sex. <laughs> oral sex. <laughs> well, how um, do we, so let's talk about um, expanding into that or. Um, yeah, so what I have learned now after investing so much time in the curiosity of the body and all that is in, in the, the story of touch and allowing myself time, being able to ask my lover for body mappings. And I don't know if the audience knows, you know, exploring your body. So think of exploring your body from head to toe for the sole purpose of connecting, tuning into, witnessing, accessing your erotic turn on, your erotic superpowers, your energy. So it's not just a genital thing, right? I want to know if I touch your ankle softly, medium, contour, slap, scratch. Is there any sensation there? You know, if I layer touch, how does how does your turn on react to that? If I just hold you with all my love and all my presence, can you energetically feel me? And can that be an appetizer for our sexual, you know, um, buffet or erotic buffet? So by learning all the possibilities of just being pleasured, meaning all the focus on you or on mm -hmm. me, I've discovered how to go beyond oral sex. And what I have found is that Oral sex is a divine opportunity for worship. It's such a beautiful opportunity to facilitate a worship ceremony of mind blowing proportions. So before I saw oral sex as sucking a dick, <laughs> going down in a curl. <laughs> you know, uh, that's my sexual coming out. So for anyone with that language may not be, it could be triggering or too aggressive. I have a big sexual in me, so I'm just going to call that. I can call it, you know, sacred space or, or yoni universe. So figure out the words for your genitals and your eroticism that feel good for you. And I may or may not get it. So just forgive me in advance that I like to say dick and pussy. Really yeah, if you don't words. like suck a dick, then you just have a different language. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Suck a dick is such a sexy, romantic term. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it warms my heart, really. Um, those words really get me. <laughs> deep. Your heart or something else? <laughs> oh, you know, it's, it's all connected. We said it's all, it's all everywhere. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. Thank you for being raw and real. <laughs> no problem. I have a very big um, sexual, too. <laughs> yeah, so I love those words, but I, I just wanted to kind of preface that. Um, so now I, I see it as more than, and, and I can give you a, a little, oh, who's calling? My mother, but we're not going to pick that up right now. We're just going to let her. Um, yeah, so before oral sex was just something like a section of the erotic experience, right? You know, 
and, and however long, but, but like a section. And now I see, I see oral sex as an opportunity to worship, to facilitate like a ceremony. So while before I may go down on my lover in the morning and just kind of go like, mm -mm. now I'm like, how can I make this into like an event? Mm. So let's say I wake up, this is like my favorite, my favorite little thing to do for my lover. And I, I have this idea of the erotic spa so I may start just lightly touching him, not just in his genitals, but everywhere, you know, maybe his calves or his hair, just kind of almost like, hey, I see you, mm -hmm. I honor you before any kind of sexual energies, just like a, a being with and really not only using my touch, but using my intention and the energy that I can transmit. So being so present with like, wow, you're the love of my life and, and I love you so much and we have such a, so I get into, I almost get into this hypnotic state of worship. And, mm -hmm. and I just wanna say that in order to get that, and maybe we can talk about that later, you do need to have a healthy mental, emotional, physical, chemical relationship with yourself and your lover or lovers. If something's off, either on you, on them, they, him, he, she, or in between you, it's, you may not access this that I'm talking about because you have to be willing to give and adore and not mm -hmm. feel like resentment or guilt or shame. So those are, we're talking about a healthy um, feeling. So I may start with that, you know, and then I may go into some massaging of his balls, of his perineum. I'm still not like directly, and maybe I'll go on his hair, you know, so I'll go through his whole body in light touch, then more contour and touch. And I'm treating all his body parts, if you think of it as, and I'm talking about my lover, him, cock body, imagine whoever your human is on the, on the bed or table or sand. Um, and I am, and I'm, I'm, I'm switching, I'm creating different sensations just to kind of like wake up his energetic body. You know, mm -hmm. and then I may go and give him a facial. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I may go and give him a bit of a blow job, you know, and again, in different ways, which we, we can get into the different layers of touch as opposed to traditional things up, down, in, out, round, round, really treating the genitals as if they were as if each centimeter was its its own entity and its own zip code, its own state, like the tip and then the side and then the top. And then there's the other section and the other and the other and the other because it's so big. Um, <laughs> and then like really luxuriating. And if I think of my dance background is how many different rhythms can I dance with this cock or mm. this sacred space or this yoni? Like how many different ways can I interact with it? Not only my hands or my mouth, but can I drape my whole body over it? Um, and I'll, I'll leave him at an edge and maybe I'll go and give him a foot massage. Right. And then maybe I'll come back and then finish that, you know, and then go back to maybe like a warm towel on the face. Think of like a happy ending spa. And mm -hmm. this could take literally like two hours of me playing with different sensations and rhythms and intentions. And to the point that he's had an entire experience, you know, with my energy, my intention, my creativity, that is so much more deeper and pleasurable than a five minute blowjob. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I just got to say that that's, um, that's such a gift because how often for any of us do we actually give that much time, attention, and space um, for ourselves to our own genitals, to our own body, right? And then be able to offer that to a lover um, just to fill them up and not so much expecting someone else to fill us up. It's, it's like, this is my gratitude and love for your body. And I just want to worship you. I just want to make you number one. I want yes. to worship, like really like I'll kiss your feet. I'll suck your toes. Like I'll wash you. And I think dropping into that energy gets me out of me. 
Mm-hmm. It's service, right? Out of my head, I don't exist, but I'm getting wet, to be honest, just doing that. Yeah, how much it. does it fill you up when you actually give so much to another body, another yeah. person? Oh my God. So yes. just a little tip. If you get wet, you can always, because he's blindfolded, him, she, them, they, you can mm-hmm. always get on top. And just do a little writing moment there, you know, where they're like laying down. So they can always <laughs> add that as a big bang at the end. Um, <laughs> but what I found is the more I give at that level, the more I encourage him mm-hmm. to give to me at that level. Because I'm leading by example. And then I feel more comfortable saying, hey, papi, chulo, is the spa open today? <laughs> <laughs> And we call that guy that gives the massages. <laughs> That's great. And then it becomes a little playful thing where I kind of throw a seat and be like, hey, I want the spa because we already know what it is. But yeah, it's compersion, I think, the word. Like being in pleasure by giving pleasure as opposed to yeah. like, this motherfucker doesn't go down on me. I'm going to give you, you know, so this resentment, weird energy. You yeah, can't always can- need for you. Um, what the about- dishes, you don't take care of the kids or like, so if you, there's resentment in your relationship. You need to kind of clean that up first before you can really drop into worship energy because it's vulnerable to worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, um, my last relationship, I started it like, I think we met two weeks before and I'm like, um, you know, using it as the teaching tool, right? We got to teach our lover how to please us. And the best way to teach it is to offer it. Yeah, so I yes. took him to a cock worship um, um, workshop, and <laughs> I was like, "I love that." This is, this is welcome to my life. <laughs> this is what cock worship. <laughs> it was my birthday, even. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, <laughs> cock worship workshop, and um, it was all about the men, and these men really. How how many men have experienced where? their cock is the center of attention and that's okay. That's okay. Um, That we actually love it, that we are learning ways to touch it. They get to learn new ways and like really be brought into their manhood. Um, Totally. You know, in a welcoming way where it's okay. It's okay to want this touch. It's okay to feel this good. It's okay to receive and not make it like the center of um, sex means I have to give you an orgasm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's the pleasure for me. The orgasm is like, I know that point. I want to know how long I can like stretch it and what else I can add. And it also gives you more variety. If we go back to monogamous relationships and lack of variety, if it's always this 15, 20 minute thing, if there's always this section, then you have like a band around that experience. You Mm -hmm. know, you don't, but when you're like, I'm going to play with you for two hours. And then I can really devote because I find when I'm having sex, I'm doing too many things and I might not go into that devotion when it's us two, because I also want my pleasure that I find the best way to give it all is to just focus on one at a time Mm -hmm. until you graduate to more sophisticated levels of mutual stimulation and all of that. Beautiful. Yeah. (laughs) And this is also applicable for pussy worship. So then he worships me and and if we couldn't think of, 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 there's just so many things. I feel like um, genitals get touched in a genital kind of way. Like this, right? And it's like, no, can you touch your, your, your breast like you touch your ear? Or can you touch your balls the way you touch your ankle? May or may not work. There's fails here all the time. <laughs> like, ouch. I think he threw water at me once. I was like, no, I don't want to be blindfolded with a cup of water in my face. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but isn't that like just part of the exploration? Um, it's, it is. So we, we get so serious about sex and it's like this way because I know this way works. Yeah. But then oh, I did it that way and it didn't work. So now it's wrong. And yeah. we stopped the exploration. But when, yeah. when you open it up to just playful and exploring and time and space, then, <clears throat> excuse me, it opens up where we can make mistakes. <laughs> and and then we oops, can, yeah. that didn't work. What are we going to do now? <laughs> Keep going. So I have yeah. this concept of the wave that every pleasure session is a wave, right? 
And I find that people get caught up when they don't know how to handle the bottom of the wave. Maybe the erection went down, maybe the wrong song came on, or maybe you got dry, you were wet, and you know, maybe he almost had you, he or she or they or them. And then, you know, when they switch the movement and you're like, motherfucker, I was <laughs> and then if you and if you go into anger finger pointing like it's your fault that now I'm turned off or or even I don't know if you can relay Holly but if I'm taking too long and these are things that I'm still working on I may get a little in my head of oh this is taking too long and now he had me I'm done and it's going to take too long for me to go back up so I'd rather not do it. Or, and this is me trying to take care of him, which is what I've learned. He's here giving. When he's ready to stop, he's going to tell me. I, I don't need to create a story about him being tired or she or, or unwilling or uninterested because then you get in the way. So I say, manage the bottom of the wave. Have a little container. Have a little talk about it. Hey, what happens when my erection go to, goes down, but we still want to keep playing? Hey, what happens when you have to pee? <laughs> That's my, like, can I just pee? Right. <laughs> you know, what happens when you switch positions and the other position doesn't work as well? And I feel that these conversations of the bottoms of the waves are not, are not big enough, are not deep enough. Because if you think about it, the bottom of the wave is the transition is the mm -hmm. connective tissue to the next high. So without that management, you just have fragments mm -hmm. of, of a neurotic experience where I'm saying, hey, can, can we use a thread and thread everything together by, by communicating, by exploring, you know? My lover and I, we know, you know, we may take a little, a little smoke break. So it's like, oh, now we're taking a break, we're gonna smoke a little, we're gonna drink, and then we're gonna keep playing. Um, sometimes we play and it doesn't go all the way. No mm -hmm. one gets offended or, but I think that's a matter of conversations and really yeah. saying, Hey, what do you need when you get dry? And then we have, we, we want to keep going. Like what would serve you? What, what would, what would invite you back into the experience? Cause I feel like we're like, I'm done. And yeah. then we're and missing I, out on what, what that expansion could be we get to yes. that point and it's like well you must be done because you're dry so then the energy kind of fades out on on the partner's end or like you're you, the guy went limp and the girl's like oh i'm not attractive all these stories and then we get stumped and we miss out on expanding past that yes. when it could be a simple conversation of like a question you know a question tell, tell me what you need you know yeah What's happened there? What can yeah. we do? <laughs> yeah. And some, yeah. And sometimes that conversation needs to happen before. Because mm -hmm. you have to be really high level to be in the middle of it, have an awkward conversation, keep going. So I would say talk about it before. Um, because as Jaya and even Esther Perel says, repair is where you build trust. Repair mm -hmm. is when you kind of, um, the relationship goes to another level. If if you don't repair, it's actually a disservice. So the bottom of the wave is an opportunity to trust more, to surrender more, to forgive, to, to create, to connect, because you're in a moment of discomfort, and which is what we don't want, right? So it's not how good we are when we're good, but how good are we when we're awkward, when it doesn't work, when it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you coming to a screeching halt or are you going to be able to move fast? <laughs> and, and ego has to be out of the room. It's, it, it doesn't, uh, it helps with power dynamics, I have to say. But um, yeah, so that's a little bit of what I feel when I think of the concept beyond oral sex is what else is possible with this experience? What else can we add? You know, what layer, what, what extension, what what repair opportunity that it can really be healing to drop into worship energy for your relationship. Um, and even for yourself, as you said, and you're like, oh, I want to worship myself the way that I worship him actually. Yes. Um, or her. You know, or they, I, actually, or I did two years of um, celibacy, like 
um, oh, wow, out years. of a relationship first. And then I was like, I took, that was when I was learning about Tantra and learning about the dynamics between men and women. And I learned so much. Um, that was like at the beginning of me stepping into my stuff. Um, and I would say that my self-exploration is the only way, like if I hadn't done that and learned my body and what I need, um, and worship myself as a whole and complete being that can create my own pleasure, then I would never have gotten to the point where I could offer that to someone else. Yeah. And, yeah. and ask, like, not even just ask, but guide someone. Yeah. And own it. This for me, you know, yeah. to worship me and, and know like that I am deserving of this. So um, that's where I come from with um, pleasure yourself. So <laughs> And if you, some of us, we can't give to ourselves, we can't receive. So it, it can go both ways. For me, I needed to learn because I was an overgiver, right? So, but now it's, yeah, <laughs> most, most of us in the <laughs> shape shifters give. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. shift into whatever they need, right? But yeah. Um, now I use it as a way, like a teaching tool right? Or this is how I'm going to create that depth with this person. If you can't offer to yourself, then you can practice receiving by watching someone else receive you. Yes. In a way without the resentment. Yeah. And um, it's such a beautiful that you bring that back to, to self because I have to say, it's easy to get lazy and be like, well, my self pleasure is like five minutes, very like, ah! And then, but I expect so much from another. And, and there's a little bit of, of noticing that, that should happen there. At least for me, there's some things that I want to try. Like I, I've been seeing these like yoni massages and like studying them. And I kind of want to try it on me to eventually then guide my lover that there's some transactional practicing mm -hmm. that I may not necessarily bring into our play. And it could be like, sometimes I move his hand or, but there's some things that I kind of want to be like, hmm, let me figure this out on my own. Oh, yeah. there it is. And then so it, it can eventually become a compliment. Um, I know I told my lover the other day, I was like, I'm going to go play in the bathroom. He's like, what? <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to find out oh, what she... my labia can do <laughs> <laughs> today. <laughs> what did you find out? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> so indirect touch. <laughs> It's huge. <laughs> yes. Are you having technical? Um, yes, I needed to plug in my charger. Sorry. <laughs> so at least for me, I don't know. You can have so much sex and that that it becomes really obvious and and a little bit like, hmm, what else can I explore? So, for example, if I want to feel something here, I would massage right next to it. Mm. So that vibration ripples. And I have found that on my vulva, my yoni, that if I massage edges or press on bone, I feel a ripple of energy that yeah. can touch my clitoris or can touch the opening. And I'm having a lot more fun with indirect touch than I am with direct touch. It's almost that I want to indirect touch me, maybe like a, a breast massage to get me for 20, 30 minutes so that energy goes down and then maybe i want you to start to go close to even through the belly button like pressing mm -hmm. there can ripple so i've been exploring with that and i it feels really naughty for me because then i become desperate for the touch which is what it's such an energetic way the play <laughs> <laughs> don't give it to me right away i want to like beg you for it <laughs> Oh my God, my love is here. Just, you want to say hello? I've been talking about our body mapping sessions and cock worship. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I'm grateful for him that he gives me permission to be so. Um, yes. So he's yes, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing all that you shared <laughs> and being so open with us because really it's like these stories of how we have experienced it and moved is is how like obviously this is how we learn yeah. um to guide others and yeah. the, the depth you were calling it street cred before seriously like we come to this because we've had this 
this experience, all these many experiences of oh my God, we've been like there. Struggle, yeah. right? So, and we still struggle. I, I still yeah. sometimes get in my head about asking for more time. Like the other day I was feeling super greedy. We had already played and I got fed. And then at night I just like grabbed his head and I was like, and a, a little thought in my head was like, but you got some already. Maybe he's tired or so we all, we all go through the waves of mm -hmm. that. It's, it, but it's humbling to be like, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in my head. And, and, you know, so I still experience that. I don't know about you. Like I need to remind mm -hmm. myself to really yeah, surrender. Yeah, but that's the gift of having some tools. So for me, I I still experience many different, like we all, just because we learn a tool doesn't mean that we're like the professional. No. <laughs> and no. never make a mistake. It's more like, oh, right, I just blamed you. It's all your fault that my turn on went away. That yeah. I, I, I go and, oh, fuck you. <laughs> it wasn't good. <laughs> so fuck her, try get out. Her. Get out. You moved wrong. <laughs> Right. So, but then it's like, okay, the tool of self responsibility. Okay. All right. Okay. We need to look at us. I'm mad at something else. This, you know, maybe I shouldn't have been playing right now. So yeah. I'm something else yeah. and I'm going to deal with that. So exactly. I, and it's just like when we learn this, have these experiences and learn the tools, it's like we can move into, um, the self-responsibility, the repair of it, yeah. instead of like feeling shamed and shutting it down and going into a 20 year sexless relationship. Exactly. Like it's, it's, it's so interesting. I'm even learning about myself, the more I communicate and, and what I've learned going back to our original thing about variety, I am also changing. Mm -hmm. And when I'm tired, don't touch my nipples. I get very protective of my nipples when I'm tired. <laughs> I didn't know that, but my lover's like, wait, sometimes I can touch them. Sometimes I can't, which one is it? And I'm like, it's both. <laughs> and then let's be playful about it. And it's not about you, but I'm noticing all like, oh, wow. When I'm tired, I protect my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I need a different kind of touch and patience to, for me to open myself back up. And that's something that I didn't know. It's recent that, I, that I'm starting to notice, oh, I, I go through bipolar stages of like, slap my titties. Don't touch me. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yes, the learning just continues, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? who are you? I don't know what to do. <laughs> and so on the receiving end of that, it can be like, I don't know what to do now. I'm frozen. I can't do anything. Or it could be like, wait, what is that? When we have the communication in the relationship, yeah. then there's an opportunity for like not taking it personally and asking like, yeah. okay, well, what, what, what's actually there? What's How, there? Yeah. When can I do this? And being compassionate. So I also get the compassionate with him because I, I know that it's so all over the place. Shape shifters. We want different things at different times mm -hmm. that I'm also like, I scared him because I just be like, no, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, it's constantly evolving if you're willing to constantly mm -hmm. evolve with it and, and it humbles you. And, you know, we're sex coaches. We know a lot. Doesn't mean we always applying all of it. it. There's always an opportunity to remember. And I think that's beautiful because it keeps us humble. Mm -hmm. and real with our with our clients like hey i've been there i've been in my head you know I, i've been turned off i've blamed i've shamed i thought about my cellulite in doggy style whether it's the good lighting or not so i think being real connects us more to who we're working with because we're not acting from a place of i'm better than you it's like hey we're all going through this and i can support you because because i've been there and i understand yes beautiful and it's okay when we make the mistakes to just say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Because you can do that. The parents, it's okay to say that to your kids too. I'm, oop, uh -huh. I, I just screamed and yelled at you for this thing and I made a mistake. It was actually my fault or I'm, yeah. I told you the wrong thing. When, when we mess up with a lover, it's okay to say that. 
Yeah, so, oh my God, you gave me goosebumps with the parenting. Cause so much repair and open up so much more space. So I just want to throw that easy fix out there that is actually sometimes not easy, right? To very say, courageous. You're very badass, Holly. I, you know, I admire you as a mom and I love, and I'm, you know, myself always asking you questions about how do you do this and that. But you have a, you talk about very high level of communication with your daughter. And I am very impressed by that because for a father and mother to say, I'm sorry, a lot of Latin families don't know what that is. <laughs> My mom definitely doesn't know what that is. She's right about everything, no matter what. And there's no, I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> Ever. <Yeah. laughs> We're both learning. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure my mom can say, your, your whole 20s. You, I, I was never wrong in my 20s. <laughs> never. I still go into it. And then later, my daughter's pissed off. She's being a bitch. And I'm like, why? Why? And yeah. I think back, oh, I said this to you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that I did that. I'm sorry I was a teenager, <laughs> a bitchy teenager to you, mommy. <laughs> No, but she's um, a bit to me. I'm like, oh, what did I do? What, yeah. what, you know, what did I play a part? Or are you hormonal? What, what is this? <laughs> Which one is it? What's your chemical, emotional, physical, or energetic excuse right. for this block that you're having right now? <laughs> but sometimes it just takes an apology and it all shifts. Yeah. And you know what? An apology is a way to look at yourself. I think it's very helpful. To not blame it all on the world, because the world is unstable, just naturally. Mm -hmm. It's more stable inside if you look within. It's like even taking responsibility. Hey, I'm cranky because I'm hungry right now. This is mine. Yeah. You know, I'm in my head. This is mine. Or he or she just blamed me for something. If you receive it, that's your responsibility. Even what we absorb, or and I always say like somebody throwing a ball at you, somebody throws a ball of shame or a doubt, or like a nasty ball of attitude, you have a choice whether to catch it or not. And it's not always perfect, but knowing that you have a choice, like, oh, shitty energy, oof, not <laughs> mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love you. Yes. yes, I love you too. Thank you so much. Thanks for <laughs> sharing. Thanks for being so open and vulnerable and, um, for all of the wisdom. Oh my Thanks. God. I feel like we went everywhere. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, love it. it. Thank you for having me. And um, you're just oh. awesome. And yeah. Wait, how do people Ooh. find you? Mm, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> Don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find me on Facebook, Lady Diana. And on Instagram, Lady Diana Coaching. And if you're interested in going deeper in this type of play, in this type of self-exploration, I work with a very particular kind of dynamic, awesome human that is ready to commit, that is ready to be vulnerable, that is ready to take risk. Um, so if, if, if that is you, like really being honest, and this is a beautiful opportunity to be like, that's not me, and, you know, or I don't want that, or I actually don't want to commit, or I'd rather read a book. So I'm starting to be really grounded in these are deep journeys, and I want to align myself with really high-frequency individuals that want to go deep, that want growth, and that are willing to sustain it over mm -hmm. time because we learn a lot of things, and then we, we, don't, we don't really integrate. So I am not so much about, hey, let's learn a whole bunch of cool things, like, hey, do you want to work on this for six months and really commit? Because I find as a coach, I, I, I'm, I'm more fed that way because we can go deeper. And I know the layers of transformation that you just need a little bit more time. So that's my little, if you feel that you're into that deep journey, then you send me a message with a little heart. <laughs> An eggplant and a little like water and a little peach. <laughs> Little droplets. I want some squirting. You want... know, and a little a plant. Let me know where we're going. <laughs> Just tell me, you know, your emojis will let me know something about you. That's great. We're not serious at all, Holly. What's, what's going on here? Too much fun. Too much fun. I know. Whoops. This is seriousness. Your sex life. 
No play. No play. <laughs> oh, cocks, cocks, pussies, pussies. Yes, thank you so much. And everybody who was here, um, I didn't actually see any questions, but thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you to the voyeurs who were around. Yes, I love the voyeurs. I love the voyeurs too. <laughs> I'm a watcher. <laughs> I'm a secret watcher. <laughs> I'm a total voyeur. I'm a total voyeur. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. I love you so much. And um, you do amazing things. I'm grateful for this platform, these conversations. Some, some, sometimes interviews feel a little stuffy. Like, and um, it feels good to just be super real here with you and have a really good time. And I'm so glad that we're sex coaches because it's the best job in the world. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And everybody, I'll see you next time. Oh, mm. and if you want to find me, I'm at holly at shamelessexplorations.com.